In India, legal is a very local profession. If we compare it to with sales, marketing, finance, these are all international functions. A CFO of a Boeing India can go to Japan, but a legal head of Boeing India perhaps may not be able to because we are trained in a way that we are only Indian lawyers. And that is where I see a scope of a very vast transformative change in legal education. Uh, how we will make it happen is uh, adopt best practices, tie up with foreign universities, which I think most of us are doing, all institutions are doing. But I think from a regulatory mindset, it needs to change. We need to adopt a mindset that legal also needs to be a international or a at par with other functions in our organization. So that's the first comment I have on this. We can always tell a bit more. So uh, thank you. Uh, we would be taking that forward uh, when we come for inquisition and all. Uh, how the skill set uh, should be given. But uh, meanwhile, uh, we will hold that part and I come to Manjali. Manjali, having done your LLM from uh, London, actually I would also want to know from you, though we had uh, off the floor uh, discussion on this, that how do you see the current education system in India? Are we lagging behind or are we at par with the international education system when it comes to curriculum and, uh, and the courses that we are giving them? Uh, also, later on we will be moving to the skill set and internships, but primarily I would want you to tell us how was your experience different from India uh, while you were studying law here and then when you went abroad and do you see the same coming to India now? Zooming years, are we at par with it? And sorry, just a disclaimer, this is just a reason for So we have to focus on all the law colleges, uh, not only focus to the few pri private universities and NAUs. So what do you think? Thank you, Dr. Kiran, and thank you, uh, audience, and JNLU and Manipatra for having us here today. I think it's a pleasure to be talking to the teachers' community, me particularly, having been a former professor myself. Um, Coming back to my experiences of uh, reading law at London, the times I read law was in the mid, late, mid to late 90s. And uh, let's, thinking of times at that point in time as what existed in India and what I saw there at an LLM program uh, was vastly different. It was very intensive, it was very, very, very structured. Um, it had, uh, I was very pleased when I got to see my, saw my timetable that I only have three classes a week. I thought I'm going to have a ball. And little did I realize that I had a reading list of over, uh, you know, n number of books, which were an n number that you have to run and, you know, get uh, photocopies, etc., to do all of that. So, a lot of reading was put on to the student. You have to uh, understand, grasp, analyze, interpret, and then go and have a conversation regarding the same in, in, the, in the class. And the classes were of three hours minimum. So you had a break in between. Uh, the good thing was there were young mothers who would park their children in the, in the pram inside and would actually be studying law with you. So that was a very uh, refreshing sight to see. So, uh, in, and in abroad, it's very interesting just on this side that dogs don't bark and children don't cry. So, it's uh, the little baby could be silent for three hours and you won't have a problem. But uh, coming back to the curriculum, very intensive, uh, very detailed. It was so detailed that the, if I had a paper called Law and Society in South Asia, so it was all about understanding how society in South Asia and what were the laws that applied to this entire South Asia region, which is India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and, and, and the likes. And you uh, had to read so much, you had to apply so much. The teacher had live examples. You would go into magazines, you know, and, and pick up. Manushi was such a big, uh, you know, uh, magazine in which you had to go and read and pick up things very active conversations in the in the class uh, teaching but followed by a lot of interaction with the student community hearing their thoughts out everybody's thought was important so the teacher paid a huge amount of attention then when it came to you had model and mock exams in which you were just given a chance to which was just the same as the others but 
uh, the teacher corrected your paper, called you, gave you a two hour uh, time in which he would take you through all the errors that you may have committed and how you can do it better. I still have those trans uh, transcripts with me where the teacher had marked it in the in the uh, margin, which I had. I was a professor myself, we, we didn't do that much uh, in, in India. So very intensive kind of training. The, the ability of a teacher to build interest in the subject I thought was so high. The teachers uh, were of a very high caliber, which I'm sure in India we have even better. But the passion for that profession was so high that it transmitted itself to the uh, students and the topic that they taught, it was not like they kind of specialized in that particular topic. So as a result, they had so much to bring to the table that it became extremely interesting. So just as a thought, lot very intensive, very thought out courses, very um, uh, skilled teachers, uh, a lot of reading with a lot of uh, uh, onus on the student to think to interpret, to understand and enjoy the subject so that you have an active discussion about it the next day with the sufficient time being given. I think the sufficient time is because the number of students was far less and the uh, teacher uh, ratio, uh, uh, teacher giving that much of time to the student was that much more. I think that's something is a disclaimer in India because we have more students studying but that was something which set it apart at that point. Sorry, before I go to other panelists, just one more question. Like we give readings to the uh, students, but they do not come prepared for the class. So what was that which forced you to read so many things and be prepared for the class for this day? I think a lot was that you were in a foreign university, you wanted to do your best. You didn't want to be that one standing out where they said, oh, this person comes from India and doesn't know what to do. But uh, I think was also about the gravitas of the universities. You know, you walked into these very hallowed universities and you felt that you know you were here to do a job and you better do it well. So and your fellow students came with the same mindset. So it was all about being very competitive with each other and you know trying to outdo each other and you know your own respective ways. I think that was the driving force. Yes, perhaps maybe one. So uh I mean, since you come from law firm background and then you uh, came and became in-house counsel, I would just like to know whether the type of work both are same over there or whether the work are different when you propose to be in law firms and when you are in-house counsel. So what are the job requirements? Sure. Uh, thank you for having us here, Jane and Manavata. It's a pleasure. And uh, to answer your question, the work uh, within a law firm and the work within a company so law firms, you can have different kind of law firms. You can have litigation law firm, you can have a multifunctional law firm where they focus on corporate law, property law, um, uh, IP uh, tax. So you have, it's very multifunctional, but they're very project specific. So the client comes to you with a problem or a transaction or some advice they need, and you need to find a solution for them, um, or you're helping them draft their documents. Um, and then it is the client that is uh, implementing the solution. As in, you know, as an in-house uh, legal team, you're not only sort of uh, providing the solution, but you're also making sure uh, you're sort of seeing the conclusion to the end. So, you know, the decision of sort of, you know, going ahead with that and seeing, the, seeing it through is what the in-house counsel does, right? So, in taxes the job requirements, uh, you know, from a fresher perspective, if I have to see it, uh, when, I, when I was in law firms and I was looking at CVs, it was, I would look at, uh, you know, uh, people who have done research, uh, have, their internship would be very important. So if somebody was looking at coming in MA, or somebody was looking at coming in property, and their internships have to be focused to be doing that, because in law firms, you don't really have the time to learn you sort of have to hit the ground running, so you have to, you know, your internship should have been strong enough to uh, give you some skill on how a law firm is functioning, what work is expected out of you. So if you're put on a diligence, you should know what a diligence means. And I think that is something that 
you know, is a is something that maybe the curriculum does not address today in uh, Indian uh, law schools. Whereas I think in a corporate there is a there is more of a learning curve that you can give to people. I think from looking at fresher CVs, I would look at their published articles, published papers. You know, done very focused research, and there would be you know the understanding that the internship that they have done, they've actually learned something. Else. I think the assessment of the internship cannot just be on a piece of paper, but it should also be, you know, what was the quality, what did the, you know, laws would take out of that internship. I don't know if that assessment is done today, but I think that should be an important part of the learning. Because that is where they are getting some sort of practical training today. So, when you are making the pressures, are you, uh, from law firm perspective, uh, do you decide already that what, which uh, department are you going to and uh, what are the background research on them or you just take the basic interns and then later on you train them? No, so usually so uh, we have interns and some interns are given you know, sort of replacement offers depending on how well they are done but you can have fresher, you know, you uh, go to law schools and you interview or you are taking them, you get CVs and you interview so usually they are taken for a certain department some law firms have a rule where they rotate people within different functions but all of them don't have that so depending on your internships and your interest area you would be taken for a particular function okay and same applies with in-house council or you just go and generally corners course they have done no so i i do look at i do look at specific when they are freshers while uh, I, I may not look at uh, say specific courses we do sort of identify uh, what what sort of area that person is interested in and uh, whether they would be suitable for a particular function because, uh, you know, uh, we, even within in-house council, we have people focusing on IP, property, litigation, uh, you know, brand protection. So we have all of those different uh, functions. So we do, we, we use the internships and, you know, maybe a specialized course or something that they may have done to see what is the interest area and try and fit in there. In, in, in-house, I think it's difficult to do rotation. You know, you don't have that much bend strength all the time. It's easier in law firms where you can see if somebody is interested in corporate but they want to move to say capital markets. That flexibility may be a little more. Thank you. So, uh, coming back to you, Swati, uh, you graduated from IAS, then you <coughs> have done a lot to reach to the place where you are. Now, looking back, uh, reflecting at the time when you joined the uh, industry, how well you were prepared and how do you find the youngsters today who join? Are they better off? And what more do you expect from them? That what are the areas where they can still work on? So thank you so much for the question, and thank you GNLU and Manupatra for having us here. Uh, so I mean, I was very fortunate to be from you know ILS Law College, where we had a combination of uh, you know full-time faculty as well as visiting faculty. And uh, we were uh, uh, we were exposed to real uh, real uh, life examples, uh, you know, because some of these uh, professors were also uh, practitioners. So they would give us a lot of uh, you know real life cases that they were handling, and uh, that would that piqued our interest. And uh, uh, the only practical exposure probably that I had at that time was MOOC course, and uh, I was also pursuing my uh, company secretary course uh, side by side. So I really did. Uh, do any law firm internships. Uh, I think uh, even though I, I, I come from such a prestigious college, my confidence on day one was pretty low uh, in my uh, corporate uh, job. And uh, I have always been in, in house. I have never worked, uh, you know, uh, in in a law firm. But one thing that I uh, made my, you know, something that is my strength. Uh, which probably sets me apart is that I first uh, work on gaining a very strong understanding of the business nuances because that is what uh, differentiates you from an in you know uh, a law firm lawyer, right? The law firm lawyer is more of a technical person who's advising the in-house lawyer, but the in-house lawyer knows the internal challenges, the business nuances, etc. So I uh, worked on those things, uh, you know, on gaining uh, these made made myself. More multidisciplined and uh, multidisciplinary, and uh, basically we are a generalist, right? All of us sitting here are generalists, and in, in. we are required to advise on uh, legal as well as non-legal issues. So we, we we are like a you know conflict management. Uh, you know, they come to us to just handle any kind of uh, issue. So 
I think just making uh, yourself uh, at that, you know, see yourself as when the company uh, sees you as a person who is capable to resolve issues which are outside your domain. I think that is something that means you're doing a job. is very similar to medical profession. A student who has just passed out MBBS, 
would you go to the doctor for your treatment? The answer is no. So I think uh, it's a very complex subject, especially corporate law, because there, is, there are so many nuances and the subject that you're talking about is corporate MA. Because it is, corporate MA is a mix of so many regulations. So unless you are a real expert, uh, you will not be able to excel uh, in that particular area. So a short answer to that question is, we need to have collaborative programs on internships. I think law schools have to really revisit the way internships are provided. I don't think, uh, as you know, Emil said, uh, it is not possible to get internship in a month. So students come to our offices or they go to uh, you know, uh, law chambers. How will you learn in a month? So we have to really be realistic. That is somebody in five years is required to do eight internships. So out of 60 months, you are doing only eight months of internship. Is that adequate to be an expert in corporate m &E? The answer is definitely no. So what we have started to do as a body of general counsel, GCA, we have already launched courses uh, with uh, Gujarat and LU, which is on aviation and defense. We have done with Maharashtra and LU, which is on arbitration and mediation. We have done with Delhi, which is on the startup mindset. I think the time has come when we need courses like these. And these courses are not only aimed for these colleges or institutes. These courses are uh, for the entire student population. So when we did with Rajiv Gandhi National University, Patiala, the, 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 the program on civil aviation and defense, we got about over 150 enrollments. And those 150 enrollments were not only from uh, RG and UL. They were all the way down south or way east. So that is what we need to do. Uh, we have to have more programs curated and industry so that students get benefited and once they have that curiosity, when they, once they do their program, they will go and for some deeper research. So I think that is what I would recommend, uh, some very deep courses on uh, some important subjects. I would further like to explain that courses part. So it is a two-year long training 
where you run through the different departments of, uh, uh, of a law firm, you're only in a stipend, you're not on a full salary. After which, and you, are, you, know, you work really diligently through, after which you are asked that you work through this, which a department is the one that you think you are going to have the best skills to work on. Then, there is a lot of discussion with the partner of that uh, department, etc., etc. Then the person gets hired at a regular salary. By that time, in two years, he's ready to deliver in that particular thing. So the problem gets sorted in some way. Uh, now, if somebody comes to a, a corporate, usually corporates have a general policy. They are changing it now that you know you really don't hire directly. You wait for somebody to have worked in a good law firm for two to three years because you know, and, and Ami did say that, you know, perhaps in the corporate we have a longer lead time, but in, in law firms we don't. Believe me, my experience is different in a law, in a, uh, in a corporate. People think life is easy, it isn't. The day you come, you're, in, you're given a particular job, you have to start doing it. So it is, it's pretty much the same. So this equation can be sorted a little better uh, bit by bit by working through the college curriculum. I think when students reach their final years, I think the curriculum needs to be shifted a little where it is spent on these aspects in terms of credits which are given, where focus training is given in this regard. You can do that in the sense of collaboration with Ami and uh, Aki talked about with industry, with law firms in a very dedicated that this is going to be the expectation. What is the first year student, uh, first uh, uh, a student just fresh out of college for the first one year, whether he joins a law firm, whether he goes to a corporate, what are the problems that he's going to face? What will be the expectations of that person? What is the basic stuff that he will be expected to do? That course should cater to that curriculum and address it through people coming to teach from the outside and putting that and gradually the faculty also understands that and becomes uh, more adept at you know augmenting and supporting that course. I think that's and certainly the internships both of them mentioned but certainly a four to six week internship is rather less even in uh, by the way today Maruti Suzuki has just signed a MOU with your college here generally where uh, we, uh, we will be doing very focused internships with the uh, students from this college. Uh, the, we are doing it very, in a very focused manner, but again, the time period is what the college allots us, which is only four to six weeks. When you go into final years, we would also not mind having the duration becoming a little more, because then the student is able to assess the organization better, and the organization is able to assess the student better. Most of these students, sometimes some good people might want to come back and join, subject to the policy of the court. That answers it. So Swati, you would like to add? I would like, yeah, I would like to add quickly. Whatever they said, I, I just want to give a practical example of how it can be action. So something like a legal aid clinic can be started by a college, uh, which is uh, like a law school clinic. No, which is uh, part of every college. Correct. And they do no legal aid activities. Correct. So I don't know how much of these legal aid clinics actually have a corporate uh, kind of act. So for example, contracts. No, legal aid does not have to do anything with commercial no. Oh, it's it's, it's more yes. It's, 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 okay. Yeah. So I was I was uh, yeah I was saying that maybe you don't call it legal aid clinic. Maybe it's a law school clinic. A clinic, correct. Uh, so where indigent people come with any kind of you know maybe somebody who can't afford, say a startup, they want legal advice. So it can be mentored. This uh, this law school clinic for startups can be mentored by uh, you know a legal practitioner and supported by the college, uh, you know, professor and the assisted by the students. Uh, so something like, so, you know, somebody wants a contract with you. They can't afford a lawyer. So they come to this, uh, this law school clinic. And these are all mentored by GCs or, you know, uh, legal practitioners who are actually dealing with these things on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, anything like employment matters, labor matters, somebody has been terminated from the company, he doesn't know what to do, he comes here and then you advise. So something like that would give some practical exposure to uh, students uh, as to what is happening in the real world and how you have to think through it and analyze the problem. Uh, I think that would give some kind of practical uh, apart from because in internships like Manjuri mentioned, it's a four to six 
month, uh, week internship where you're mostly researching. You're not going to be given, you know, a, a matter to be to handle. So you are just researching up somewhere down in the, uh, you know, in the background doing the research. You may not even be, uh, you know, part of the uh, assisting the senior in a negotiation as an intern. So you don't get that exposure. So uh, you know, certain these clinics like on maybe on conflict management, somebody comes with you know a, a fight, but they don't want to go legal. So ADR. So something like that can be probably be initiated. This is this is happening in the US, and maybe something like that can be looked at. Okay. Uh, before I give input on that, I mean, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I was just talking about uh, you know, when we uh, were talking about what, what is, uh, the original question was, you know, how is it to be a pressure today, right? I think I still find uh, because we do hire uh, pressure situation things, and I think once you to some extent where we feel that maybe in a company you need someone with experience to come in because sometimes they do not understand what the job description also is saying. So if you're, you know, somebody is saying I want to be part of the property team, I want to be part of, you know, corporate team based on some interest, what the job actually entails is something that they don't understand. So they don't understand uh, so if it's compliance, they don't understand what compliance would be. Uh, they're not familiar with the technologies that are being used by companies, you know, to actually do some of these things. And I think somewhere that is where, you know, uh, while this is not really a course based thing, but that kind of uh, awareness can be brought in for students to know what is it that the company is going to expect from you when you see a job description that says, you know, looking for an opening in the secretary team or the compliance team or like, you know, the property team. I think they really need to sort of understand what is it that they are getting into? Because I, I think that, that even like you know, uh, the previous panelists mentioned, you can't teach everything, right? You can't make them a master in the first day. But I think today kids are walking and not knowing what they are getting into. And I think that, uh, that is something that definitely, you know, as a part of your placements, etc., is something that can be got. So what I take from our, you know, all these six uh, discussions, First, that uh, I think Akhil was talking if we have long term internships rather than this eight one one month internship at the end of every semester, maybe we can curate like engineering courses where the last semester is left for their internships, or maybe like medical, as you said, that post they have taken their degree, they have to go for one and a half years of internships. Now, that indicates that law firms and the companies they have to curate for them that okay, first we will be taking you as a turn on stipend basis and then how you meet the standard and they can uh, accumulate into uh, the job. So suddenly we can look on our uh, curriculum and focus more on internships. And then second, I think you are focused on having short courses. Now for this, you will have to take that responsibility as a corporate that uh, we as a teachers, we are very willing to come and uh, uh, help in whatever manner we can so we can give our labor, but at the end the input or the content has to come from your side. So if as a company you can adopt one uh, law school and then look into their curriculum where all you can give those training like you took three months, give three months training to your interns. Can you take that to classroom without thinking that okay, all of them might not come to your organization. So for technical education there is an apprenticeship law yes. which requires 12 months training, but not for legal. Right, so, so all those we can uh, But Dr. Ray, one more thing to it was that uh, all your points are very valid and some of them, all of them we have mentioned. But I think uh, as law colleges, universities, I think if you are looking to place your uh, students, which every law school is, I think you will also have to relook your final year curriculum to see that it should not be terribly academic heavy. But a large portion of the final year gets, um, you know, used for uh, for uh, giving them training of this kind. You can't make them like ready, ready lawyers, but you can understand from a law firm and from the industry what may be some things which are really basic, which are required for them to find their feet in a law firm or in a corporate. What are the basic stuff that is required? So then they don't feel like a fish out of water. It becomes very difficult for a young student, you know, to, to really, and everybody is not equally resilient to fight their way through and take it forward. They do need a bit of a soft landing. And how that can be done, I'm sure the industry and law firms would be able to support
support in that, but the curriculum changes to be brought about by the universities. Yeah, as, as a part of that, you know, when we talk about internships, you know, I think the assessment of the quality of the internship also is something that maybe, you know, if the law school also sort of takes responsibility for, because I think today you ask for a certain uh, number of internships to be done, but are you sort of assessing or understanding what is it that those kids have done at the internship, right? Because somebody is saying, we're pushing files around. And for eight internships, that's really not going to help them. So I think that assessment of the quality of the internship also becomes very important, where if an intern is going, you know, with the expectation, maybe, you know, as a law school, you know, because you've already collaborated with companies when they come to placements, that the quality of work that the intern gets, and, the, and you know, the assessment that is done either by them or you at the end of it, knows that at least there was a practical training was of the quality. That's a very good point and I'd like to add here that uh, we just signed up with NLU Gujarat and we signed up with two other colleges in the states where Marathi is located in and uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, there are very clear states that we will be providing very quality internships. There will be a project which will be based first on a discussion with the student, first through his teachers and then through the student himself to see what will be the area of work that he would be he or she would be interested in. Uh, we have nine departments in the, in the legal uh, function in which cover almost like, almost all aspects of different aspects of law. Uh, the child will be given that thing. There was a dedicated manager level person who will be supporting that person in everyday activity. The child is going to write a full-fledged project out of it which is going to be pitched to me and to my direct reports. We will comment on it. He will be answering questions on it. We will certify and sign it and then send it back to his college with my recommendation on it. So it's a very, very dedicated and a program which is going to, with the idea of just making sure that both the child and the, uh, the company that he comes to benefits. It has to be a mutual win-win situation. So to Ami's point, that's very important. Uh, okay, so in fact that relates also to management program where they have summer internships where the industry person also assists them on the basis of the report and even the faculty guide who has been just allotted, the person also sees what type of project the student has gone through in that industry and assesses on it. Coming back to Sophie's, your point on clinics. Now I am a member of uh, European Network of uh, Work Clinics. Unfortunately in India the teachers they cannot practice and as you suggested we can have clinics wherein the corporate councils or uh, people from law firm or a practicing advocate can come take up that matter and help us out. Now what is our personal experience with no offenses to anybody, the practitioners they do not have that much time that they, if we take up the matter and we go for their guidance that they would be coming and guiding us. Even for a case like legal aid, if you have a, a person from a very poor family and they have to file a divorce petition, like lawyers they say, Am to par, uh, in Mumbai, like, case we make so much of money. So that is the challenge. As a teacher, I cannot practice and the practitioners, they do not have time. So we will have to find, find a middle path around it where we can take this forward. Uh, now, already taking the cue from this, uh, the law courses have mediation programs. Now the students are doing very well in mediation competitions and that helps them develop that. Booting, as you already said, has taken the litigation skills. So we will see if this corporate programs or the uh, councils, even law firms, if they can create programs for specific law uh, field and come to us, wherein as a teacher we can help them in assessment and doing all the you can say delivery part and maybe component building and uh, the hand holding can be done with you all looks to me as in current scenario the way VCI has set up that only seems to be working to make them uh, well on mediation I have a very strong view that uh, perhaps these national universities are the best centers they can establish at mediation centers because they have everything they have good courts they have library they have academics uh, the only thing is you have to add a list of professionals who along with the current academicians and practitioners could develop NLUs into the mediation centers which in a way would also train students. Right. So it could be a training ground within the university. Okay, so uh, since we 
idea of having possibly of time. I think from this little time we could come out with uh, solid workable solutions. But uh, okay, so I have a couple of observations. I'm not a lawyer to get it first. But observing this industry for the last 25 years very closely, interacting with uh, students, doctors, team professionals, and also a parent who are lawyer. I've uh, actually been through a lot of this thing. A, colleges are not making a person a lawyer, they're teaching law. They know very good law, they can interpret law, but they're not lawyers. Two, what I personally feel and all of you have said, the one month internship every semester doesn't work. Because by the time you get to know the people, your internship is over. Third, and this is a suggestion from one of us, if Everyone can think of setting up a finishing school. Well, what we hear from, whether it's a corporate or a law firm, and all of you have said, the lawyer comes, he's clueless. Well, no, colleges are not taught them. Well, that's not part of the curriculum. The BCI has to be played, not the colleges. So if there's a finishing school of six months, and let the candidate decide, he wants to be a litigator, he wants to be a corporate person, he wants to do pro bono, advisory, he joins that part of the finishing school. He doesn't do all four. Well, at the end, it will do the same thing. Kya bana? Deepakji, this is a topic of discussion and we go back to delay tonight. Done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But a brilliant idea. Yeah. Think, uh, in fact, you see, the entire uh, starting of honors program was that you are taking the student to that stream. But unfortunately, like out of 120, we have 100 students going for only corporate loans because that is going to give them a better job, a better paying job. So, uh, this is the idea. In fact, so, Dr. Bhai, one more, one more suggestion can I make? You know, I, I talk to a lot of students and I keep hearing that somebody who is in second year or third year, they come back to me and say, I want to, I have decided to be a corporate lawyer. So, my immediate reaction to that person is first become a lawyer. And for to become a lawyer, you have to be good at everything. Yes. Jack of all trades. We, the four of us here on this guys are jack of all trades. Right. We can call us our in masters of many, but generally we are journey masters. Okay, so yeah. on that positive note, we end session. Anybody would like to have last closing remark? Yeah. Or we are, we are saying what? You are having us in the stage, so you can conclude. Curriculum perspective, uh, we are pretty okay because uh, you know I saw GNLU syllabus and lot of uh, latest subjects uh, are there like mediation and uh, uh, evolving uh, jurisprudence and contracts and ancient Indian legal history. So there are so I think from a subject curriculum perspective we are we are quite there. Probably we could reduce a little bit of theory, theory and uh, a little more of practical or hands-on training like English one, English two, some these some things. Like this can probably be looked at, yeah, you know, because, because we have that uh, interdisciplinary BA honors. So BCA says these many BA courses you have to take, so that you fulfill BA So we have to teach English and English. I hope BCA is hearing all this. Yes. 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 I just want to conclude by saying I think um, uh, universities and uh, uh, you know seniors at the university together across the country need to have some sort of discussion with BCI on this and give some practical sort of uh, feedback that yeah, at the end of the day this whole course the universities are being set up for the group of the students and if it is not meeting that purpose then there seems to be some gap which needs a little bit of correction and uh, whatever we can do from our side if you know we continue to talk to BCI on different areas so if this is also a topic that I'm sure we'll try and do our best, but I think thank you for a great discussion. And if there's some value that we've been able to add today to help the community here, I think uh, we may have. Yeah, it was quite a certain session. To me, it has made certain things very, very clear. So I would like to close with thanking Manupatra, GNLU, and obviously the GAIC for the helping us out to understand how we proceed here as a law teacher, law university to make our students smart and Let us make that uh, for Thank you. Thank you.